Hi everyone, in this video, we'll be learning how to determine if a set of vectors forms the basis of a vector space. So now, our first step, we determine if the set of vectors is linearly independent. This is step 1. How? These are the methods. So we have already covered in our previous lecture, in our previous two videos to show if they are linearly independent. So we write a linear relationship among these vectors. And then we construct an out meta matrix having the matrix of coefficients, which is the set of vectors in the subspace and the matrix of constants. So basically what your out meta matrix is, is this. So you have A B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and your constants or matrix is zero, zero, zero. So this will be you have this will be your first vector, second vector, and third vector. And now we reduce it to your echelon form. Then we can find the values of the scalar constants of C1 and Cn. And if we found this to be equal to zero, you can say that there's a trivial relationship and it's linearly independent. And now for step two. We determine if they span the vector space. So how? These are your steps. So for any distinct same vectors, we write the linear relationship among these vectors. And this is your subspace. Again, the same as this. So again, C1, S1, all the way to Cn, Sn, where C1 is the same scalar constant. And now we determine for any vector in any vector in Rn can be a linear combination of this n vectors. That means, for example, now for any vector with real components of x, y, and z, so, in other words, they are asking us for which vectors with real components of x, y, and z are there scalars c1 and c2 that hold. And this is different from this. So, now we can write it in this form. Therefore, let's say in, let's say if you have, for example, we have r3, so you have three variables so you have like three components so therefore you have so if you're given like three vectors like here so you write it as c1 a b C plus C two D E F plus C three G H I equals to any vector in R three is x y z. So this is how it's written for this equation. 
And so now we use a Gauss method with back-to-back -back substitution to find the scalar coefficient of this to make the vector equation true. So in this sense, we can write C1 A plus C2 D plus C3 G equals to X. And you can do the same for Y. For the second row, you just expand N for Z. And you can use the Gauss method to do it. And now if the coefficients can be written in terms of the real components, that means you can write C1 in terms of X. So if C1 is equal to what? X plus Y plus Z should be and for C2 and C3, we can say that this can be written as a linear combination of the given n factors, n vectors. And we can say that this one was span the vector space. Sorry about this, just ignore this line. So now we if we can find that it is linearly independent and it spans the vector space. We can say that it forms a basis for a vector space. So now let's we are given this example of a vector. Let's start off from here. So step one, we let's perform our action for step one here to show that they are linearly independent. Step 1 goes to here. So let's write first. So C1 1 2 3 plus C2 3 2 1 plus C3 0 0 1 equals to the zero vector which is this sorry zero and then we can write it we can do an augmented matrix from here so after that you get one two three 3, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So now, after this, we are done with this step 2. Now we reduce it to reduce row echelon form. But first, we have to reduce it to echelon form. So this is row 1. row 2, row 3. Let me do some cleaning up first. Therefore, now you want to eliminate the entries in the first row here. So, minus two times of row one, 
plus row 2 and also minus to eliminate the entry in the third row in the first column so it's minus 3 times of row 1 plus row 3 So let's keep our first row constant. 1, 3, 0, 0. And then minus 2 times 2 times 1 equals to minus 2. Minus 2 plus 2 equals to 0. So the same goes for this. Minus 2 times 3 equals to minus 6. Minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4. And also, minus 2 times 0 equals to 0. 0 plus 0 equals to 0. And this one also, 0 minus 2 times 0 equals to 0. 0 plus 0 equals to 0. And now for the this one, so it's minus 3 times 1 equals to minus 3. Minus 3 plus 3 equals to 0. Minus 3 times minus 3 times 3 equals to minus 9. Minus 9 plus 1 equals to minus 8. And here, minus 3 times 0 equals to 0, 0 plus 1 equals to 1. And now here, for the matrix or constant, minus 3 times 0 equals to 0, 0 plus 0 equals to 0. So now, we have done with the first column. Now the second column, you want to eliminate the, en the entry here. This is our new first row. New second row, new third row. So now you have to eliminate this. We add two times of row two. We add minus two times of row two to row three to eliminate this entry. So again, minus two times of row two plus row three. One, three, zero, 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 minus four, zero, zero. Now zero. So this one is minus two times minus four equals to eight. Eight minus eight equals to zero. And for this, minus two times zero equals to zero. Zero plus one equals to one. Now, 0 plus 0 equals to 0. So, they are almost there now. So, now what do we do? We divide our row 2 by minus 4. Therefore, you get 1, 3, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So our system is now in row echelon form. Now to make it to reduce row echelon form. Now let's do some cleaning up. So this is our system in in row echelon form. And 
No. Let's write it again. We want to reduce it, make it to reduce real echelon form. So this is our row 1. Row 2. Row 3. Hence, we can. Now we notice that 1 is the leading entry. And now for this one, we start with column 3. Above 1, the leading entries are 0. And for column 2, this is not 0. So you want to eliminate the leading entry above 1 in this column 2. So now we minus 3 times of row 2 at 1. So let's keep our last row constant. And our second row constant. So here, minus 3 times 0 equals to 0, 0 plus 0 equals to 0. Minus 3 times 1 equals to minus 3, minus 3 plus 3 equals to 0. And for this also the same, minus 3 times 0 equals to 0, 0 plus 1 equals to 0, and this is 0. So we got in this form, we found that from here, C1 equals to C2 equals to C3 equals to 0. So we got a 0 scalar constant here. Therefore, linearly independent. So step 1, done. Now let's proceed with step 2. So hence, from here, let's write the linear relationship that just now we explained. So hence, C1 1 2 3 plus C2 3 2, 1, plus C3, 3, 0, 0, 1, equals to x, y, and z. So now, let's write in this form using, let's extend it. So C1, sorry about that. C1 plus 3 C2 equals to X. And now let's extend the second row. 2 C1 plus 2 C2 equals to y and now last row 3 c1 plus c2 plus c3 equals to z so now let's start off from this we can write this first as C1 equals to 
x minus 3 c 2 and now we sub in here 2 times 2 c1 equals to 2 x minus 6 c 2 plus 2 c 2 equals to y right, this is our three equation here early on and from here you get so let's make c the submit let's make c2 in terms of x and y so 2x minus 4 c2 equals to y so from here we can simplify by saying c2 equals to 2x minus y over 4 so we found our c2 and then now let me do some cleaning up first Now, let's start off finding C1. C1 equals to x minus 3C squared, 3C2. So, x minus 6x minus 3y over Four. So cleaning up, you get so it's four x over four. So four x minus six x is minus two x plus three y over four. So now this is our value for C one. And now let's find C3. From here, C3 equals deck minus C2 minus. 3c1 equals to z so minus c2 is minus 2x minus y over 4 minus so 3c1 here so minus minus 6 x plus 9 y over 4 so now let's tidy these things up so z equals to 4z over 4 so we can write as 4 z so here for the x coefficient is minus 2x minus minus is plus or minus 2x plus 6x equals to 4x plus 4x 
So now for the y, so it's minus, minus y is y. So it's y minus 9y, so minus 8y. over 4 equals to z plus x minus 2y. So now we have our values for c2, c1, and c C3. So we are able to see that we can write it as a linear combination of the, any vector can be written as a linear combination of these vectors. And hence, we can see that this makes the vector equation true. And we can say that these vectors span the vector space because we Step 4 is confirmed that the coefficients at this C1, C1, C2, and C3 can be written of this. And the any vector can be written as a linear combination of these three vectors. And hence, step 2 is done. So step 1 and step 2, step 1, done. Step 2, also verified. So we can say that it forms the basis of a vector space. So this is done. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a comment and I'll reply to your comment as soon as possible. Thanks so much for watching the video and have a nice day.